The general template for Curtis's documentaries as we know them was 1992's Pandora's Box. Curtis had directed incredibly insightful and stimulating documentaries prior, one of them The Cost of Treachery previously discussed on this program, although Pandora's Box, a six-part miniseries of 50-odd minute episodes, was the first far-reaching, ambitious effort to distill the currents of power sweeping across the globe, which he has effectively maintained to the, through the remainder of his oeuvre as it currently exists. I shall give my brief spiel on my modest takeaways from each of the six episodes here. The first episode details the eventual collapse of the Soviet Union, the most infamous of the quasi-utopian social-political experiments, ended in an utter catastrophe, one of the most authoritarian states in human history, and one which deduced Western capitalism as the answer to its peril as economic collapse and military dominance defined the subsequent pseudo-democratic epoch. On the other side, the United States defined itself after the Second World War and the innovation of atomic power to defending itself from potential nuclear attacks from this chaotic, gradually dissolving Soviet Union, and ideas about predicting human behavior, later classified as game theory, would become highly influential upon making its own citizens, the US's, feel supposedly happier, or so they would say, freer, the allegedly distinguishing factor of the West compared with the Eastern Bloc then. In the UK, a mixture of the old democratic free market and socialist-inspired economic planning was proposed and executed in a manner that left the nation tragically crippled during and by the later 1970s, supposedly rescued by Thatcher's privatization and free market idealism, enchanted with the ideals of Milton Friedman and others, until it became apparent that the economy was still in a relative, how shall one say, shambles. Many came to conclude that the economy was not a subject which could be easily anticipated, curated, or even taken advantage of, despite the supposedly empirical practices of those within the quote discipline unquote. The scientific idealism of America's post-war era was gradually disintegrated via scandals involving very dangerous chemicals and new pesticides. The corporate subterfuge and manipulation had saw even though these exalted men of science being either taken advantage of or willingly obfuscating results and data. The birth of America's so-called ecology movement in the aftermath of this controversy led to an emphasis on nature and the purity of the natural world and the environment, which some claimed was inherently scientific, others were concerned that a mild dogma had newly emerged into the modern discourse. And then Ghana, a case wherein it seems cut and dry that the United States sabotaged a nation's attempt to build itself up into an economic power post-colonization and decolonization whilst reaping the rewards and culling the capacity of that state to build itself up without U.S. involvement. U.S. corporations became heavily involved in the development of a major dam in the new Ghanan state, fronted all of the money, deceived the subjects into ensuring the U.S. would receive the benefits of Ghana's new energy-derived resources, and that Ghana might be crippled where this not the case. Ghana went bankrupt. The U.S. may have made something of a profit, they organized a coup, made sure they didn't play nice with the Soviets, and offered a brutal example of how the decolonized states were not entirely the playgrounds of warlords and powermongers, but genuinely included instances of the prior colonial powers gutting these nations prior to them being able to initially sustain themselves independently. And then finally, the controversies over nuclear power. Some still claim it is a glorious, wondrous, valuable resource, and that stigma from a certain hippie bulwark in society is preventing people from seeing the light in more ways than one. That is certainly true. To believe in the saving graces of nuclear energy is one thing. The French seem relatively happy with it still. Although I would hope that all of these advocates can explain how Three Mile Island or Chernobyl was oh so easily avoidable, particularly the former. Mocking Soviet ineptitude can, can't explain America's errors, which led to the Three, the Three Mile Island incident. And then Japan, a nation prone to natural disasters, is still suffering consequences from God's gift to the world, going all right back in 2011. The point is, pro-nuclear people ought to be the ones working on those plants. It is only fair. You guys go in to stabilize the reactors, Spock in Wrath of Khan style, you transparent chicken hawk cliches. Maybe the French are more competent than most of us. It might not surprise me, to be fair. In any instance, the nuclear question is not going away anytime soon, and the idea that the you know, the notion of nuclear warfare disappeared with the end of the Cold War is no longer taken very seriously, especially since 2022, say, sadly. Pandora's Box is one of the finest projects Curtis ever embarked upon, and is a highly valuable resource in learning how historical forces shaped the year of our Lord, 1992 AD. Thanks, everyone. I hope you are all as well as you have ever been. That only goes upward for you from here.